Hi, this is Mark from Toronto Hala and welcome to this feeding episode. Today I would like to answer a question that I get asked a lot. How long does it take to feed all of our animals? For the purpose of the video I will only feed our tarantulas and scorpions. We also have some snakes, isopods, millipedes, shrimps and triops and of course our feeder insects which were fed two days before. We want our tarantulas to be well fed after all. So how long does it take? Let's check it out. So, are you ready? Absolutely not. So, three, two, one, start. So, in the meantime, while you are watching me focus on having the longest feeding session so far, because we never feed everything at once, I would like to give you some tips on how to maintain and monitor a larger amount of animals. And while most of new keepers are thinking that this is a lot of spiders, I must remind you that the majority of this quantity is basically my Neoholotele Inse Gold slings, which are steady but slowly finding a new home. There is a faster way of selling those, but that's a topic for another video. Tarantulas have a great advantage when it comes to keeping them. They do not require to be maintained all the time. That does not mean we do not need to do anything. They are living creatures after all. But we need to be smart about it. So, here are some points to keep in mind. Number one, plan ahead. You can see that I started with feeding all of my slings. There is a reason to apply this strategy. First of all, you can prepare the animals that must be fed on the same day and use the same feeder colony in a batch feeding session. The way I do it normally is that on one day I am feeding all of the slings, on the second all juveniles and on the third all adults. There will be moments that you will notice that some spider groups won't eat because they are full, they will molt sooner or later. The knowledge on that will save you time. Number two, check the basic needs. Do the chores now, admire later. Of course, there are situations when something unexpected happens, which is cool and keeps you entertained. But the whole point you are fighting now is to have time to enjoy them later. As for the basic things you need to check, there is if the tarantula is alive and if no, why? Is the tarantula molting or freshly after molting? What is the size of the abdomen? Is the tarantula hungry? What humidity is in the enclosure? Is it too low? Is it too high? Is the water dish full? Is the tarantula well? Are there signs of illness? For example, the dyskinetic syndrome. Number three, stay focused. Batch feeding is time consuming. We all know that. But as mentioned earlier, do the chores now, admire later. It sounds harsh, but the sooner you get things done, the sooner you'll be ready to enjoy your pets. As an actor in a motivational video mentioned, Yesterday you said tomorrow. Just do it. Number four. Keep track of supplies. Feeding everything in batches is also a great opportunity to track all of your supplies. Feeder insects, substrate. I'm not talking about decorations, just the basics. Do you have roaches or crickets that are a proper size for the tarantula you're feeding? Are they also fed? Keep those informations in mind. They will avoid situations like I had when the fruit flies colony for my golden orb weavers died and I needed to get them in a hurry. Number five, do something while feeding. And this is the most important part to stay sane. Play some music, do a voice or video chat, talk with your roommates, drink a delicious coffee. Make the process as pleasing as you can. I, for example, had a conference with my friends about a LARP we are organizing this summer. And after that, I chilled to some smooth and relaxing British heavy metal music. Number six, keep your workplace clean. 
The more stuff on the table, the more opportunities for misfortunes to happen. What I mean by that is closing the container with feeder insects, removing substrate from the table, keeping the enclosure stable and secure. That way you can prevent roach outbreaks to your room, tarantula escapes, etc. And if a tarantula bolts out of the enclosure, you will have an easier time catching it on a clean surface. Number 7. Be prepared for the worst case scenario. Batch feeding lowers our concentration. Mistakes happen, tarantulas can bolt out of their enclosures, roaches can escape the tweezers. And it is exactly this moment where breeders are most likely to get bitten. Keep a catch cup ready and work carefully. And there you go, I hope those will help you on the road. Keep in mind that everyone's journey is different and that what works for me might not work for you. Okay guys, I'm tired, but I have the official answer. It takes around 3 hours to feed around 200 tarantulas, spiders, scorpions. The reality is, with recharging the camera battery and to make room on the SD card, it took way longer. It's 2 a.m. now and I need to recharge my battery. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing, ring the bell, leave a comment what you like, what you want to see in future videos, and we'll see you soon in the next episode. Tarantula out.